Good morning, San Diego. Thanks so much for waking us up with us here at 6 a.m. It is Friday. We made it yes. to the end of the week. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Netta Irampour. So we have you covered when it comes to the Miramar Air Show. I know so many of us are excited for it. But first, we are following some developments in the homeless crisis. So we want to get you caught up on this. Today, officials in El Cajon will meet with motel operators amid a dispute over homeless people using motel vouchers issued by the county. El Cajon's mayor, Bill Wells, said two motels were operating at as shelters illegally because 100% of occupants there were homeless. Wells also claims the county is bringing people from other parts of San Diego to El Cajon, but the county says 64% of people using vouchers in El Cajon are from the city, that city rather. Today, officials and motel operators will discuss how to proceed from here. A local lawmaker wants to ban homeless encampments near certain areas. State Senator Brian Jones introducing a bill that would prohibit encampments near schools, parks, libraries, and daycare centers. He is set to announce more details about that proposal later on this morning. A Utah student is arrested for reportedly threatening to uh, cause an incident at the University of Utah after a game with San Diego State. Authorities say the 21-year-old made a post on social media threatening mass destruction by detonating the nuclear reactor located in the University of Utah. She was booked and released. And this morning, prosecutors are set to wrap their case in the arson trial for a local sailor. Seaman Ryan Mays is accused of setting fire to the USS Bonham Richard, destroying that billion-dollar ship. Yesterday, sailor Kenji Velasco told prosecutors he saw Mays walk by him toward the lower vehicle storage area just minutes before he saw smoke. While defense attorneys pointed out Velasco did not name Mays until several days after the fire started, they claim he felt pressure to identify a suspect. Well, it is still unclear here this morning when the fugitive known as Fat Leonard will be returning to San Diego. Leonard Francis here is still in custody. The country has poor diplomatic relations with the U.S., though. Francis escaped house arrest in San Diego earlier this month before he was sentenced in the largest Navy bribery scandal in U.S. history. The judge has moved the sentencing hearing to December 14th. And now this morning, Bermuda is dealing with these strong winds and dangerous storm conditions. I mean, you see that here, you can hear it. Look at those waves. Hurricane Fiona passed through Bermuda in the overnight hours. This is some video posted to social media. Look at those palm trees getting bent sideways. Some people in Bermuda were left without power now. And tomorrow, Fiona, which is now a category three hurricane, 125 mile per hour winds, is expected to hit the coast of Nova Scotia. So it's moving rapidly up north. It could be the strongest storm in Canadian history. The Biden administration and just announced the federal government will fully reimburse Puerto Rico for all Hurricane Fiona costs for the next month. And now protests are growing this morning after the death of Masa Amini in Iran. <laughs> police car that was flipped over. You see the fire there. Now, the 22-year-old died in morality police custody for allegedly improperly wearing a hijab. This morning, the U.S. is sanctioning Iran's morality police, which will freeze their assets in the U.S. and make it illegal for American citizens to do business with them. Iran's president was set to give his first ever interview on U.S. soil yesterday, but you see here, he canceled because CNN anchor Christian Amanpour declined his request to wear a headscarf during the interview. She said she's in New York. She doesn't have to, and she refused to. Protests over Amini's death have spread around the world. Even at California's capital in Sacramento, you see video of that. Here at home, there will be a vigil at the House of Iran at Balboa Park. That'll be tomorrow at 11 a.m. to honor the life of Massa Amini. And today, thousands of San Diego students are set to join global climate strikes as millions of students all apart the globe will take part in this. Uh, kids at over a dozen local schools will hold demonstrations to demand action on climate change. They specifically want President Biden to declare a national climate emergency and Governor Gavin Newsom to end oil extraction in California. All right, everyone, it is full speed ahead here for the Miramar Air Show. The local tradition is clear for takeoff for the first time in three years. We're here. I mean, look at what we get to see across our awesome. skies. It all starts today. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is at MCAS Miramar with all that we can expect.
Uh, Marines are calling this the largest air show in the world. They are so excited and we're so grateful to host this here in San Diego. Now we did get a front row look and preview of the Blue Angels earlier this week, so it really is incredible to watch the precision in the sky. Now this year's theme is Marines Fight, Evolve, Win, which reflects the 2030 Marine Corps Force Design Program and new era of technology in aviation and on base. Now, in addition to the air show in the sky, for the first time ever, there's an innovation tech expo in Hangar 3 that people can enjoy that will showcase local companies who are researching ways our armed forces can use their technology. Now, if you're planning to be one of the 500,000 people expected to enjoy the show this weekend, only one large clear bag per person is allowed. You also must show ID to enter the base. No glass containers or ice chests allowed. Also, no pets. Now, the schedule is the same Friday through Sunday. Gates open this morning at 8 a.m. with the first show at 9.30 and the last show scheduled at 4.13 p.m. Admission, parking, and blanket seating are free. If you'd like preferred area seating in the grandstands, you can find a ticket online. Now, earlier this week, we did speak to the Blue Angel commander who says since Top Gun Maverick came out this past summer, there's an incredible buzz around aviation, so they really are expecting record-breaking numbers. Just a reminder for you, though, you are not allowed to pull over at any point, especially on the 15 freeway, to watch these Blue Angels in the sky. Safety is really, really imperative when they're flying over this area, so please take note. We're going to head in to that base pretty soon here, so stick with us all morning long. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, forced to be a state in Miramar. And our Marcella Lee got to fly with the Blue Angels. We'll show you her flight <laughs> on an FA-18 Super Hornet coming up in our next half hour. Now, oh. I don't know, you know, all the details of this Whoa. jet. I just know that that's fast. Fast, and they go straight up, and vertical. Like Look, she's doing right there. That's the ocean that's the behind ocean her. Under her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and they're spinning while and going she's straight smiling. up. Oh, this is going to be a great story. Wow, you can't wait to, to see it. Okay. Well, uh, you see the blue skies in Marcella's shot there. Those, are those going to stick around for the, uh, the, the air show here today? They are indeed. Uh, we could have a few passing cumulus clouds, a little bit more moisture in the atmosphere than uh, days prior to today. But today and tomorrow are really the only days where we have uh, maybe partly cloudy conditions out there. Uh, I'm impressed that Marcella kept that smile going that entire time. Very cool. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what the weekend entails. We are going to be seeing a ridge of high pressure build overhead and with it temperatures are climbing. So this afternoon we're in the upper 70s along the coastline. By the time we get into your weekend Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be in the low 80s out there 81 and 82 along the coast. I know this is very mild. Uh, we are still going to be above average. 82 is about five degrees above normal for this time of year, especially now that we've really entered the fall season after yesterday's autumnal equinox. Uh, however, moving into your inland valley, that's where the heat is really going to be felt. So this ridge of high pressure builds overhead. Temperatures are going to keep climbing through the weekend and early next week. It looks like Monday and Tuesday are the days where those temperatures hit their peak. 94, 96 degrees out there. Still a lot of sunshine all the way through. Uh, this afternoon, though, we are staying mostly mild. There are a couple inland valleys where we'll climb into the low 90s. So Santee and El Cajon, for example, uh, 90 degrees is still pretty warm out there. But keep in mind, we are going to start to see a shift where earlier this week we still saw a decent amount of humidity out there. Going into the weekend and early next, we're going to see those relative humidity values drop, and that is because we're going to shift from onshore flow, that is water along the ocean, cooler sea breeze, but humid, and we're going to start to see that wind come from the east, which is dry and warm. So uh, moving up the coastline, Encinitas today, 75, Carlsbad, 79, 85 for San Marcos, and 89 for Escondido. And then if we head over the mountaintops, it looks like we've got a high of 84 in Julian, 89 in Alpine, 102 out there for Brego and Ocotillo Wells. That means that this heat wave, so to speak, continues all the way through the weekend. Again, Monday and Tuesday are those peak days, and then we'll start to see those temperatures drop down with an average of 77. It looks like we'll be back in that about average range by the time we get to next weekend, but still all the way through next week, we're going to be dropping each day. Let's take a look at what's going on in traffic this morning. So far, things have been quiet on the roads. We are not seeing any major crashes or collisions. That is still the case as we take a look at these traffic maps uh, across the Coronado Bridge. Still seeing a decent amount of volume once you get over the bridge, so headed into uh, Coronado itself. But uh, beyond that, you're not seeing much trouble. A lot of people hitting the snooze button this morning, so uh, head out at your normal speed.